In this video, we are going to be talking about a simple math formula used by designers and possibly architects and something that years ago I was convinced to believe was the truth. However, if we do not take into consideration the size of an individual, for example, you might have a shorter person with a larger foot or a taller person with shorter legs, or most importantly out of all, the difference between a three foot tall person's step and a six foot tall person's step. So I don't think we can just pigeonhole and create an exact formula that's going to fit everybody. And like I said, this was something I believed at one time, but even though I just saw it the other day in a lumber sales brochure for using LVLs for the stringers instead of conventional construction standard lumber. However, if we take the average person's height into consideration, a step and stride, then I think we can get to something relatively acceptable. And that's what they're trying to do here. And I think the best formula for this will be the 17 and a half inch rule. And that's going to be as simple as adding the length of the tread to the height of the riser to get 17 and a half inches. And I believe this formula will work as long as the riser heights do not exceed seven and a half inches. So we can always make the riser a little shorter and the tread a little longer. For example, an 11 inch tread and a six and a half inch riser might work just fine. However, a four inch riser, which is usually the shortest riser they want to see on a set of stairs, might provide some people with disabilities a way to get up and down a stairway a little easier. However, it's not going to provide the average person with the most comfortable step, and that's what we're looking for. And the same holds true if we get into the maximum riser height allowed by most building codes, and that's going to be eight inches. And I can tell you that this step right here, eight inch riser, nine inch tread, which could be the minimum length for a tread in your area, along with the maximum height for a riser, is not going to provide a comfortable, safe step. And by now some of you are thinking, well then why do the building codes allow it? And some don't, because there are other building codes that suggest using seven and three quarter inches for buildings with less than 50 occupants, which might not sound like much, only being a quarter of an inch but it will be for some of us. And for buildings with more than 50 occupants, the total overall riser height might max out at seven inches. And for those of you who have no interest at all at using this extremely complicated math formula, I would suggest building your stairs with a one inch overhang or nosing or a one inch undercut providing you with a 10 inch tread run and a one inch overhang along with a tread depth of 11 inches. So we're still going to have a 10 inch tread run and the overhang or undercut isn't going to make any difference for people walking down the stairs, but it will make a difference for people walking up the stairs. So I would suggest trying to stay within a 10 inch and a 12 inch tread depth and a riser height between seven and seven and a half inches if possible, with the understanding that you can go up to the maximum or down to the minimum riser height. Just try not to make the step smaller than 10 inches if you can. And again, I would like to say this is information for the average sized person. However, to make that statement, I would need to provide you with an average size for a person, and I really have no interest in going down that path. So if you're someone who is larger than six foot five inches or shorter than four foot, and you're looking for a comfortable step for your stairway, and you're looking for an easy method that will work for everyone, an easy math formula, then check back with us in a few years, because by then, just maybe, I'll have figured it out.